My name is Felipe de Jesus Perez. I was born in Guadalajara, Jalisco. I remember very little growing up in Mexico because uh, I've spent most of my life in California. But I do remember that my mom used to work a lot, so my grandma would uh, babysit me. And one day my mom showed up at my grandma's house and she seemed stressed and really worried. She had a taxi waiting in front of my grandma's house. My mom started saying good goodbye to her sisters and family. I remember everyone was crying, but I really didn't know what was going on. We ended up taking off in that taxi and went onto a, a bus before we knew we were in Tijuana. In Tijuana, we were there around May 1989. I remember it was May because my birthday is in May and I remember turning five in Tijuana trying to cross. We got caught three times by the border patrol and I remember running running through hills and desert areas. All the times the coyotes would tell us to get down and hide on these ditches that were already there for us to hide. And most of the times the coyotes tell, were telling us, Ahí viene el Mosco, which is uh, the, the border patrol and helicopter. When we would get caught, we would get through like a big jail cell full of other women with my mom. Everyone would be crying and including my mom. I didn't know what was going on. We gave it a fourth attempt to cross and we did it. We were in TJ trying to cross for about a month and eventually we crossed and woke up in LA. From there I went into a small town called Arvin. That's where my father ended up picking us up. My father didn't even know we were in the US. He, from there my father took us to Arvin and ended up taking us to Turlock, California. You can, as you can imagine, my mom's expression trying to give us a better life in the US because when I think about it, this still, I think my mom is the bravest person I know. I, she risked everything trying to give us a better future. Anything could have happened trying to cross, we could have gotten killed or she could have gotten raped or we could have gotten separated. I couldn't imagine what was going through her mind trying to get us across because we actually were living really good in Guadalajara and now that I think about it, we live better in Mexico than we did in, in the US, but my mom used to tell us she wanted us to have a, our dad, dad uh, didn't care. He was already seeing someone else and in the years, which was why I think he used to beat us all, all the time. We, we ruined his plan to, I guess, when we showed up. Growing up in Tola was tough because I, I grew up in a broken home full of abuse and violence. Uh, when my father wasn't being me, he was being on my mom. I remember one time uh, getting tied up with my brother back to back on a chair and my father told my, my mom not to untie us until he got back from work so to to be my mom wouldn't would untie us but she would assist us to use the restroom uh, I had just turned five and my brother was four now I know my mom uh, loved me and my brother and she didn't want us tied down that my father would threaten her if we got untied my mom would call uh, my mom couldn't call the police because she was scared of getting deported uh, Everything was fear going up, fear of law, of getting deported, fear of racism comments that we would get from the people on the street, fear of uh, my father. My mother wasn't allowed to work, to learn how to drive. My dad didn't, didn't want her to learn English because he didn't want my mom to turn out like the American women. A lot of the, a lot of the times I didn't know why my dad would beat us. The, he would just get drunk every day. There was no money to buy us clothes or take us out, but there was always money for beer. We couldn't even play on the street. So as soon as we would get home, we were in the apartment all day, uh, even the weekends, which is why I, I would hate the weekends. Even in high school, my father wanted us at home after school, and my mom, well, some that all applied to her. Eventually, I started thinking that I wouldn't, I didn't want to live like this, being in a like a prison at home and having seen some. Commercials about the Marines growing up made me think about my childhood fantasies uh, of joining the Marine Corps. I wanted to be part of something big. At the time I was already 17, I ended up at the Marine recruiting station in Modesto. When my father found out he wasn't having it, he said that I wasn't going anywhere. And my response to him was, well, once I turn 18, you won't be able to stop me. So I ended up taking off for boot camp. I graduated from boot camp. And my first duty station was Okinawa, Japan. While I was out there, I felt so free from my father, but I felt so guilty and I felt like I left my mom behind. Having these things on my mind made my job in the Marine Corps pretty tough, but I did what I could to get by. Now from Japan, they sent me to South Korea for a month deployment, and then I went back to Okinawa, Japan. Then finally back to San Diego. When I got to San Diego, I had about five months in California before I ended up in Kuwait. 
and then Iraq. <clears throat> I was in Iraq for seven months, three weeks, four days. But the Marine Corps was even more isolation and more, uh, I became more antisocial. I felt like being imprisoned, even worse with more restrictions and more isolation. I tried to go to college while I was in the court, but I, was, I wasn't allowed. Then I wanted to go for a Marine Security Guard and guard the U.S. embassies all across the world, but I got shot down because I wasn't a U.S. citizen. I applied for citizenship later during the Marine Corps career, and I went to two interviews, and I never became a U.S. citizen because I didn't go to the third interview that I didn't know about because I was never notified. I ended up getting married while I was still in the service, but then my grandfather passed away, and then my great-grandfather passed away, and I didn't go to the funeral because of the Marine Corps, so I decided that the court, the court was not for me and my family comes first plus I was tired of being away from home and most important of being away from my mom. I stayed living for about five years after I got out of the Marine Corps living in San Diego and I enrolled into San Diego City College and then Abby, my firstborn, was born but me and my wife ended up getting separated and my wife went back home up north to Turlock. I ended, ended up enrolling in Modesto Junior College and moved up north so I could be close to my kids but my ex-wife wouldn't allow me to see my kids, so moving up north was in vain. I was always depressed. I felt hopeless, unable to see my kids. I tried to go through co the court system, and the judge ordered me to go to parenting classes, so I did. Then I went back to court. I went back and forth. At, at the end of the judge, at the end, the judge sent me to see a therapist. Then the judge told me that the therapist had diagnosed me with PTSD because of the war. I was ordered to get help for PTSD, but I ended catching up a case with, which put me in prison for, for three years and on my way out of prison I was taken away by ICE and detained in a detention center for about three weeks. Later on I ended up getting deported to Mexico. So I was stuck in Mexicali for about 28 days before I was able to cross back and on my first attempt to cross I made it successfully. I went back to Turlock and started working illegally which was weird to have fought for the U.S. and been through been thrown out. The military, the military tells you that we leave no man behind and I was deported and, and I was back in the U.S. but illegal with all this paranoia worried if I could stop while driving I would get uh, incarcerated and then deported again. You have to understand I've been in the U.S. all my life and ending up in Mexico is scary because it's a world that, which I really don't know about. I hear my mom with a lot of anxiety and really worried over the phone. She's really scared for me, but for the moment I, I'm stuck here in Tijuana. But they give it two years before we can go back home as a U.S. citizen. I plan on sticking around to them, but the truth is whether I go home legally or not, I'm going back home regardless. It's funny sometimes I'm at Blyers looking at the beach and there's a spot where there's a border wall from the beach you can't see San Diego and down, the downtown area where I used to live where it used to be my home and I can't help but to think that I'm so close but yet so far.